Rather than leaving my computer system sitting on the floor, I thought it'd be a good idea to build a nice little computer desk. And in this video, I'll be going over the process. I'm thinking of something like this. The two long boards on the back will be mounted to the wall with some leg screws and to studs. And then the four brackets will be mounted to those two boards. The top desk part will be made out of some recycled one by material I have laying around and just gets screwed down to the brackets. I've chosen to cut these boards at six feet. But of course, your spacing will differ and cut them <laughs> at the lengths that you need and will fit for your space. 10,000 to one. A chop saw would do a whole lot better job than a table saw for will for this. It's a seven foot board. I'm cutting one foot off the end. Unfortunately, I don't have a chop saw right now. Or a circular saw, which would also work well. So I'm going to run this through on the table saw, which not the best way to do it, but it's what I've got to work with, so I'm going to have to make it do. Before I start making my actual cuts, we're going to cut a few sample pieces here, and I'm going to explain how the corner for this bracket is going to work. So let's cut these up real quick. All right, so when it's all said and done, here's what we have. We got these two boards with a bunch of thin little feathery pieces that we gotta smash out with a hammer and chisel. So if everything turns out, we should be able to just take a hammer and kind of lightly tap on the end here and just break off all of these, all these chunks. And we'll end up with something that's more or less clean. And we'll go ahead and do that to the second one right away. Or the safer way would be have a solid backstop over here and chisel. But uh, yeah, I kind of don't. So, so yeah, the other option is to chisel downward like this. pretty well till you break through and then accidentally gouge your grandmother's extremely expensive piece of mahogany furniture. And no, I don't know why you would be doing this on a piece of super expensive mahogany furniture. So after spending some time with the chisel, we've got two somewhat clean looking ends and these are just going to get glued together like this so they don't have to look amazing because you'll never see them. So they'll get glued together in a nice 90. Uh, you should use a square to ensure that your brackets are actually at 90 degrees. And then uh, for added security, I'm gonna shoot probably three or four screws in there just to make it extra super strong. And then this will sit up against the wall and this will have the tabletop on it. And the only way for this joint to break would be if those screws shear because your pivot point is right here which means your two screws here and here would have to literally shear at this crack seam or split the wood out in order for this to break and of course you have this whole inside space here has glue on it so the whole surface there is providing support too so this should be a very strong joint um, there's probably somebody on YouTube who's done videos testing how strong this type of a joint is, but it's probably very strong. Now the other thing we're going to do, and unfortunately it started raining, which is why I've moved into the garage, um, but we're going to have the braces running against the wall, and I probably won't film most of this because the lighting in here is horrible, um, 
So while the brace isn't running on the wall, what I'm going to do is cut out about three quarters, half an inch deep on these boards, the thickness of a two by four. And I'll have it at the lower and I'll have it at a higher point. These are only samples, the actual boards will be longer. And then that is going to pretty much control the height of the shelves and it'll make them good and strong too because they'll actually be notched out and then they'll still be screwed on. These will not be glued on because I want to be able to take these off because they have to get stained at some point. Uh, obviously you can't do that in the rain. I spent some time deciding what height to place the two backboards at, as I wanted to make sure I'd have a comfortable height when typing and using my computer. I settled on having the desktop at 30 inches and figured out the proper heights for the boards using that information. Where those boards go will depend a lot on where you're going to cut the notches and the brackets and how thick the material is that you'll be using for the top. Who needs a stud finder? Instead you can just drill 14 inches worth of holes. Um, what's this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 holes. And I found my stud. So now I know where a stud is, so I measured out 16 on centers from that, which I believe these wells are 16 on center studs. And that's going to give me my locations to start screwing these boards up and then level and lay bolt them in. This is probably by far the easiest and the most accurate way to get a board level. Don't go off your floor, because your floor is probably not level. So, I've got this, uh, yay, 299 torpedo level. I don't know if it was actually 299, but uh, definitely really not the right kind of level to use for this job. But again, it's the only one I can. What can I say I'm poor, okay? I just bought a house. So, this line here is theoretically the same height no, no it's not. It's not even close. What did I do? How did that get so far off? Interesting. Oh, I know how it did, because I made it wrong, I'm an idiot. Okay, well in that case, this makes it really easy. Basically what you would do <coughs> is you would put your level on here, and you would adjust your board up and down to the level reports that your board's level. And then you just screw your screw in the wall, then you make your Measurements for rear studs are drill your pilot holes for the leg bolts and go to town. Unfortunately, my stuff's in the wrong spot, so I'm just going to fix that all off camera. Alright, so, top board's mounted and it ain't going anywhere. I'd stand on it, but there's really no way for me to stand on a one and a half inch ledge with a wall behind me. There's it's just really hard to do, you know what I'm saying? So, board one done. At this point, I decided I'd bite the bullet and spend a few hundred dollars and buy a chop saw, as it would make my life so much easier and keep me safe while making these cuts. I cut the board from both sides, as the blade didn't reach the entire width of the board, and then finished off by sliding the board around under the spinning blade. This worked a million times better than doing it on the table saw, and was much faster as well. To give this collection of recycled material a little more finished, professional look, I cut some angles on the ends of the brackets. It also makes them a little less painful when you hit them with your knee. I used the same method to cut the notches in the backs of the boards as I did to cut the grooves for joining the two boards. This time, however, I put a board between the board I was cutting and the fence on the chop saw, which enabled me to get a cut through the entire board without having to cut from both sides. This probably isn't the most safe method in the world, but I didn't have a bandsaw to use, which would have made it a little easier. Because I already had the boards mounted to my wall, I knew the exact spacing that I needed to have between the notches to get a snug fit. So now we come to everybody's favorite part of these kind of videos, sanding. So I have a sanded board here, which hopefully the camera's focusing on, and I kind of rounded over the edges on the cut I made there, kind of rounded that off a little bit and then just kind of sanded the surface on it. These will get stained eventually. This is the original non-sanded version. You see hard edge there, hard edges here. So I'm just kind of rounding those over. Uh, it's gonna be up against the wall, so it's very unlikely you'll ever hit it, but if you do, uh, you know, a rounded over edge is gonna hurt a little less than a sharp edge will. Plus it gives it a little more of a finished look. So, 
Yep, I just got eight boards, to, well, seven boards to sand, and then we can finally get this stuff installed and see how it looks. Here I am just doing a dry fit of everything to make sure the brackets all fit together. There's nothing worse than building a project and discovering a problem that would have been easy to fix early on, but turned into a much larger problem because it wasn't caught soon enough. I opted to go with three screws to hold the two halves of the bracket together, and used a small carpenter square to get a perfect 90 degree angle. A pocket hole jig would have been amazing to have, but unfortunately I didn't have one. So I drilled two shallow holes and then, using those holes as guides, drilled an angle hole, giving close to the same effect of a pocket hole. A better method would have actually been to use leg screws and just bolt the brackets directly into the boards on the wall, but I didn't think of that until it was too late. Now it's finally time to attach the brackets to the boards. I made some small marks on the backboards to know where to place the brackets, and used a square and level to try to get them straight and square. The brackets have some wiggle and flex, but once the boards are screwed onto the top, most of that will be eliminated. This thing's finally starting to look like a computer desk. The top I'm making out of a bunch of rescued 1x4s that I picked up out of the trash, so they were a little rough. I sanded the top and top corners fairly smooth, and left the bottom fairly ugly, as no one will ever see that. I didn't cut them all the same length, as one side is in a corner, and will be covered by a printer. The short board is for the front, where my keyboard and mouse will sit. I put some scrap 2x4s up against the wall to get an even space on the back, and to give me space to run all the cables for the peripherals. I spaced the boards with some carriage bolts to get even spacing between them. That wasn't the best method as the threads got caught between the boards a few times. These boards weren't all very straight, so I had a fight with a few of them to get them all running parallel to each other. I alternated between using one and two screws in the boards for no real reason other than that the short board hung over the bracket too far to get two screws in it. I made it look like the alternating number of screws was planned, but it really wasn't. Setting up my computer system was exciting. I'd been storing my tower and monitors on a wire shelf that was super sketch and not very comfy or practical to work at. Cable management wasn't fun, but it never is. I was able to keep almost all the wires hidden from the top side, so it looks very clean. Five months later and I've finally edited this footage into a video. I made a few upgrades, such as staining all the wood and adding a few dowels into the brackets to run wires over. This keeps the wires off the floor and out of view. I've also upgraded some of my components, and relocated things to better fit in the space. I have complete plans on my website, so you can easily make your own floating computer desk. Overall, this project only cost me about $10 for materials, though I did get most of the wood for free. I expect if you had to buy all the lumber and hardware, you'd be looking at $20 to $30, which isn't at all bad for a sweet computer desk.